Whew, man, that was good. Whoa, something's rumbling down here. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, looks like it's the gut again. Big surprise. Hey, nervous system. Hey, what's up, brain? Yeah, looks like the gut is leaking again. Can you go down and tell him to build up his wall? Um, sure thing. Thanks. Sometimes I wonder where this body would be without me. Hey buddy, how uh, how you holding up? Oh, hey nervous system. Let me tell you, it's been a hell of a week. What's happening? Um, brain says that you're leaking again and when you have some time to start to rebuild your wall. You know, when you, when you, when you have time. Oh yeah? Brain said that? Well, why don't you go tell Brain if he stops stuffing his face, maybe he'll have time for those type of things. And if he has a problem with it, he can mosey on down here and help me with all this crap. Uh, okay. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftinbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we're talking about how to start getting healthy from the inside out, down at the microscopic level. Basically, how we can improve our cellular health leveraging different fasting and feeding protocols. As always, we talk about the why, the how, and how you can potentially apply it to your everyday life. Reviewing both human and animal research that's been published to date. And hopefully, you know, I don't know, we'll, we'll make some sense out of this complicated subject slash topic. At the very least, for me, in that case, I should be, thanks for, thanks for helping me out. You didn't have to, but I'm glad you did. We're not done yet, we're just getting started. First, let's explore how long cells actually live. And to make a very long story short, it depends. Here's why. Different cell types within the body exhibit substantial variation in the average time they live, ranging from days to the lifetime of the organism. For example, the heart and the brain are maintained by cells with a very low turnover rate, AKA a long lifespan. While other organs and tissue, such as the outer layers of the skin, the gut wall, and blood cells, rely on high cell turnover, AKA a short lifespan. But regardless of how long our cells live, we know that there's one thing that can make or break them, and that is a constant siege of internal or external stressors. Now, we know from this previous video that not all cellular stress is bad. There are several mechanisms in which low dose toxins or stressors from certain compounds like phytochemicals in plants or environmental factors such as exercise or dietary restriction, AKA fasting, can in the long term be protective for the cell. Is protective a world, a word? It can protect the cell. This is known as hormesis. And I suggest you check out the good stress, bad stress video down in the description below for more on the topic. The problems tend to arise when cellular stressors come in the chronic fashion. And as a result, that annoying guest who nobody invited shows up to the party. Yep. Low dose, chronic, systemic inflammation. No bueno. So our body, as the master adapter that it is, has a few ways of dealing with these stressors. And by us being more educated about the potential risks, we can leverage several interventions to put ourselves in the very best position to live a long, healthy, disease-free life, AKA owning your health. So for this conversation, we will be focusing on how the intervention of fasting, both prolonged and intermittent, can potentially heal us from the inside out. The changes that happen during a fast. Fasting causes several different metabolic, hormonal, and cellular shifts throughout the body. The obvious disclaimer here is the fact that everybody is different and different protocols may impact different people in very different ways. So always consult your doctor before diving in. Now let's get into it. Dietary restriction has been seen to promote 
both metabolic and cellular changes that affect things such as oxidative damage and inflammation, energy metabolism, and enhance innate cellular protective mechanisms. And fasting is pretty much the most extreme form of dietary restriction. It is the abstinence of any food, any energy, and just relying on water. And fasting is typically applied in a consistent protocol, aka intermittent fasting, or a periodically prolonged fast, aka a fast that is typically 48 hours or more. In rodents, intermittent fasting has shown protection against diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and neurodegeneration. In humans, intermittent fasting and fasting memetics, which we cover here, have beneficial effects on insulin, glucose, the inflammatory C-reactive protein, and blood pressure. We talk a lot about all the benefits and my personal self-experimentation with a lot of different protocols in the fully loaded Fasting 101 playlist that I will link down in the description. If you are interested, I highly suggest you check it out for much more. So as part of our body's natural response to the low nutrient levels of a intermittent or prolonged fast, 24 hours or above, there is typically a decrease in glucose, insulin, and insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1, all major components to cellular growth. And with this lack of nutrients, glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids, our major cellular growth pathway, mTOR, is largely silenced, putting our bodies in quote unquote survival mode, upregulating innate protective survival mechanisms, and preparing ourselves for the long cellular winter. Winter is coming. Thanks, John. This is also accompanied by autophagy, our in-house cellular recycling program that breaks down all the weak and damaged parts of our cells and recycles them for energy or future use. In layman's terms, we're cleaning up the trash and reutilizing what we can at the cellular level. And this includes mitochondria as well, something known as mitophagy, a lot of tophagies, which is important if you remember from this video. And in an ideal world applied over time, this leaves only the fittest, healthiest, insult-free cells and reduces our overall risk of disease onset. Now, I say in a perfect world because autophagy has been seen to be a survival mechanism for existing cancers in animal models. But that's a topic for another day. Why does the microscopic world need to be so complicated? Anyway, one of the cool things that also happens is what it does to relatively inactive stem cells. What happens to our stem cells when we fast? Recent research suggests that prolonged fast, 48 hours or above, induces a reduction in the levels of white blood cells, followed by stem cell-based immune system regeneration upon refeeding. A lot of big words. Wait, are you telling me that fasting may be a little reawaken those cells that can essentially turn into any other cell that our body needs without doing the $10,000 stem cell treatment? I'm interested. Let's look at the research. First, a 2018 animal study out of MIT provided evidence that fasting induces a metabolic switch in the intestinal stem cell from utilizing carbohydrates to burning fat. Interestingly, researchers found that switching these stem cells to fatty acid oxidation enhanced their function significantly. So this shift in fuel sources from glucose to fatty acids seem to give new life to these overworked gut stem cells. Interesting, but is age a factor? I mean, we know that stem cell activity tends to dampen as we age, right? Well, that same study and others have shown that a 24 hour fast augments stem cell activity in both young and aged mice. Whoa. Now, please note, a 24 hour fast in mice is more like a four to seven day fast in humans to put it in perspective. Moving on, another 2014 study in elderly mice showed that a 72 hour fast in mice, which is probably in the realm of 10 days for humans, protect hematopoietic stem cells, AKA the stem cells that make our blood, from toxicity associated with chemotherapy and stimulated the proliferation and rejuvenation of older hematopoietic stem cells. So, 
that's pretty cool. But what about fasting without actually like fasting? Fasting memetics. Well, very interesting animal research suggests that fasting memetic diets are effective in promoting the increase of hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cells, which are likely to contribute to the regeneration of various cell types and systems. And if you remember, we covered what the hematopoietic stem cells were, but those mesenchymal stem cells are stem cells found in bone marrow that are important for making skeletal tissues such as cartilage, bone, and the fat found in bone marrow. Pretty cool stuff. What, what was that? Oh, what happens in the brain? That's a good question. Let's talk about it. Animal research points to fasting as a driver for neurogenesis, AKA the formation of new neurons. And preliminary research with the fasting mimetic diet, what we just talked about before, shows similar results with an increase in neurogenesis in adult mice. Now, with all this, here's the cool part, or equally cool part. I think it's all cool, but here's another cool part, the refeed. The refeed is thought to be of high importance because this is when all of those growth pathways get turned back on. This is when you once again get sufficient energy to rebuild um, yourself. So when you're choosing foods upon a refeed, you probably wanna stick with high quality ones and not highly processed lab derived artificial crap. Just a suggestion. And here's why. Researchers hypothesize that the refeeding may be critical to optimizing the regeneration of cell types after fasting. The thought is, when I say thought, I mean the hypothesis is, the increase in growth factors IGF-1 and PKA, protein kinase A, after refeeding contribute to the proliferative and regenerative process making them potentially critical pieces to the regrowth of the organism at the cellular level. So what does this all mean? Well, to be frank, it means that we still have a hell of a lot of research to do. All of this is so damn interesting, but still very preliminary. And we have to keep in mind the fact that a lot of our data is coming from animal models, which clearly do not translate one-to-one -to, -one to humans. But at this point, that preliminary data shows a ton of promise and suggests that it could potentially bolster the beneficial effects we already know fasting brings to the table. Many reasons people turn to fasting is to promote weight loss and fat loss, and that's totally fine. But the way I like to put it is this weight loss is a mere byproduct of getting healthy at the cellular and metabolic levels, essentially getting healthy from the inside. So as we think of it in terms of longevity, Knowing that these biological pathways exist and the potential promise that they bring to the table is extremely important. So I hope this was informative. It was definitely very informative for me digging into the research and I look forward to more and more research in the future. If you wanna see anything and everything fasting, we have the Fasting 101 playlist that is fully loaded with both research reviews and my own N of One fasting experiments. As always, if you have any questions, ideas, any random thoughts, throw them in the comments below. I will look at and answer all of them. This was fun. But if you'll excuse me, my stem cells are waiting on a refeed. Until next week.